Check out what the satisfied Dan Jemis real estate team clients are saying about working with the Dan Jemis team. Visit danjemis.com. You know, I got to thank you for being a voice of reason in a sea of insanity. Now back to the Dan Jemis real estate show on AM 800. Okay, welcome back to the show. Uh, oh my goodness, I went through the giveaway here and I've got, I've got a fund on my screen. I forgot to press the magic button here. Uh, who wants to uh, do, oh, Kath, raising her hand. All right, Kath, there you go, go there's the it. screen. We're gonna give away the gift card for the Richmond Popcorn Company. 50 bucks to the lucky winner. Kath, who do you have? Heidi Dimitrovic. All right, Heidi, congrats. The winner for today's gift card. Uh, Producer Ed will be in touch with all of the details. All right, time for our legal segment with Christian Janice from Simply Close. Hey, Christian, how are you? Hey, everyone, how are you? Fantastic. Magdalena, Kathy Talbot in the studio today. And uh, you've got a great topic. Uh, and after your topic, Christian, we have a listener question that we're going to get to. So uh, what are we talking about today? Okay, so today we're talking about notices of security interest. Um, a lot of people might not be aware of them, but they may have dealt with them when they go to refinance. So what a notice of security interest is, is that if you have like a hot water tank or if somebody goes door to door and says, we'll, we'll give you some type of rebate for insulation or uh, some type of micro loan for a roof, what they'll do, and, and oftentimes it's unbeknownst to the homeowner, is they'll register what's called the notice of security interest on the property. Yes. It's essentially a lien. I mean, that's not the legal term. It's notice of security interest. But the easiest way to think of it is that it's a lien. But instead of it being um, a lien on the entire property, it's only for the amount that they need to recover for, you know, say the hot water tank or whatever it is that they've given a loan or a for. Yeah. Yeah. So what I wanted to talk about, though, is that these things are often there, like I said, unbeknownst to the homeowners. They can cause issues when you go to go refinance. You know, for example, Reliance charges $220 for you to have them remove it and put it back on when you get a new mortgage. When you're selling, it could be an issue for a buyer because they have to pay for that postponement, which is what I just described. Um, but the good news is if you come across one of these now, uh, come the new year, the government is going to be introducing a new bill. It's still in discussion, uh, but they do plan on putting some level of consumer protection to prevent these, you know, some of them are fraudulent. Like some of them are, they're not even supposed to be there. Wow. Um, but some of them are, uh, you know, pretty aggressive or like they're excessive loans. And the government is now taking action. They're going to start putting restrictions on who can register nosies or notice of security interest. Uh, so right now, anybody can. You don't have necessarily have to be a lawyer. You just have to be registered with care of you. Um, for example, like a mortgage uh, has to be registered by a lawyer, a change of ownership, but not everything. Like a discharge of a mortgage can be registered by somebody that works at the bank. But the government is taking action. So what I wanted to tell everybody is that if you come across one of these nosies, whether you're refinancing or selling the property, as long as you have enough notice, that's often the issue with these things is that you're selling the house, it's closing in 30 days. And, you know, you don't really want to deal with it, uh, or you, like, you want to have it taken care of without having to pay for it, but you have to get rid of it for the buyer, right? Um, but come the new year, there should be steps that you can do to get rid of it. And they're even talking about retroactively canceling some of the ones that already exist on properties. So kind of a education, but more of a public service announcement, I guess. I, so again, I'm assuming you're happy with this, right? You're happy with this news? Very happy with this. This is yeah. always annoying, like, especially if, if you have a buyer that's agreed to assume the hot water tank, for example, and it's uh, registered, like a nosy is registered on the property, it's just very annoying to tell clients, like, hey, you know, you have to get rid of it because the bank wants first priority and that notice is going to be ahead of the bank. And, you know, oftentimes they're confused and it's tough. So it's definitely a positive. All right. Uh, thank you for that, Christian. So we have a question. Uh, Matt, I'll let you uh, go ahead and, and uh, ask it. Yeah, for sure. How's it going, Christian? Hey, Matt. So uh, the question is about appliances in a home. So let's say someone puts an offer on a property and one of the things, let's say they put a clause in the offer um, about cleaning the appliances. Perhaps they say something along the lines of, you know, the seller agrees to deep clean all appliances um, prior to closing. Now, as we know, when it comes to cleanliness, um, different people have different standards. So the question around that, I think, is, you know, what's enforceable and what's not enforceable? 
So it depends on the clause and the clause. And if the, my big thing that I'm going to be, you're, you're going to, you guys are all going to be hearing me talking about this from now on is you put this clause in, but what if? Like, what if they don't clean it? Um, if they put something in there, like somebody, if a buyer were to put that, you know, the house or the appliances have to be clean, you're right. There are different standards of clean. Uh, what you would look at is what a reasonable person believes is clean. Uh, so, you know, some people might be more particular about how clean things are and some people might be less, but it's what would a average person be, uh, like how, what would an average person think? But the issue with those clauses is that there's, they're essentially unenforceable because if they don't leave, the the appliance is clean what happens what if it's not done uh you can't right. sue somebody over that i mean theoretically you could have a claim but the cost of cleaning is definitely going to be cheaper so if your clause says they have to be in a clean like the appliances have to be clean otherwise the seller will be penalized a 100 bucks that that would be the only way to do that and actually have it enforceable otherwise it's just not even worth the time and effort yeah interesting okay yeah it makes sense it makes sense Awesome. That, that worked for you, Matt? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that would be an answer, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Uh, how, do, uh, how does anyone reach out to the team over at Simply Closed if they, they have any can, questions? Uh, shoot us an email at hello at simplyclosed.ca or give us a call at 519-997-3775. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Christian. You too. Hi, Christian. That's Christian Janice, uh, real estate lawyer with Simply Closed uh, and uh, lots of great resources there. and. Yep, great way of putting it. And oftentimes, it's, it's like you know, I, I've dealt with so many lawyers over the, the last you know the years. We all have, right, in our, in our business. And they always say like people often talk about suing, but at the end of the day, it's not worth it sometimes because the, the cost to do that is just you know ridiculous, right? So I, uh, I find that sense. question really interesting, Matt. Have you had an example like that? Because in all my years in real estate, I've never had anyone put a clause in saying the appliances have to be deep cleaned. Um, I, I have, I yeah? have, yep, in my wow. ears, yep, yep. I, I mean, that. I've seen the clause where the house has to be in swept order and that sort of thing, yeah. debris gone, and but I've never had anybody say that. Yeah, and I think it's not a matter of like trying to get away with anything, anything like that. I always tell my my sellers, sellers, buyers, whatever, you know, hold up to what you, to, to your end of things, sure. you know, and it's a matter of, you know, because again, some people are pickier than others. So if, like you said, a reasonable right. person, you go and you think, but if an appliance is not brand new, you're never going to make it look brand no, new. Just no, like but to it, me, right? if you so, are cleaning it, like you would like it if you moved into the house, sure. you know, that well, to me is... Yeah. The opposite is true too. If you go see the house and you can tell they haven't cleaned the oven in 10 years, you can't expect it to be beautifully cleaned on closing, I don't think, well, because try, it's never going to come off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just just a, just a thought. I've never had that, so now I'm going to watch out for that. There you go. Okay, we're out of time. That's it? No. Flew by, didn't it? Always does. Madalena, Kathy Talbot, thanks for coming as always. We appreciate Thank it. You. Uh, if you have any questions about anything you hear on the show, you can always reach out to us, or if you want a free home market evaluation, the Dan Jemis team is always there to help. You can find us online at danjemis.com, D-A-N-G-E-M-U-S.com. You can also phone us with the old telephone, 519-566-5565. Enjoy the rest of the gorgeous day. We'll see you all tomorrow right here on AM100 from noon to 1. See you then.